Today, I will show you how you can configure your CCAM A8000, IEC 61850 server functionality, and how to send and receive information via Goose. So, let's prepare this example for 1CP8031. First, we need to have at least one 61850 firmware in the RTU. To do that, we click on the Application Configuration and Licensing box. Here, we can add the protocol element for the IEC 61850 communication protocol, which for the Linux-based CCAM A8000 is the ETI-5 firmware. Now we can see how the firmware has been equipped in the central processing protocols as the protocol element 0. First, we have to create an RTU settings 1 station for each IEC 61850 client that will subscribe to the CCAM A8000. For this example, let's assume we will have only one client. We assign the internal number designation for this station in the configuration, in this case, station 0. We must also define the IP address of this IEC 61850 client. We also need to define here the own mode of the CCAM A8000 for this connection. We chose the CCAM A8000 to be a server. In the menu reports, we can choose if the report should be unbuffered or buffered. Or if you want to have for every single message that you are publishing one unbuffered and one buffered report, you can also do it here. In this example, let's select unbuffered, which is enough for most applications. Now, in the next step, don't forget that, as always, for every station you define on one protocol element, you need to create one entry in the topology. So you add one line there. You select the protocol element and the station. For this station, the CCAM A8000 is sending information, so the data flow routing must be set to monitor direction. This is the first part that we must do in our configuration. For the creation of the data model, go to the home settings and then to the IEC 61850 box. Here you will find boxes for every protocol element that has been equipped with the ETI5 firmware. You will see one box for client functionality and one box for server functionality. In this case, we're interested in editing the server functionality. So we click on the server box. Now we can start defining the data model. First, we must define for this protocol element a unique IED name. Let's name it CP8031 underscore pre zero. Then we choose the addition that will be used for creating the data model. For the Linux based RTUs, as per February 2023, the firmware supports the version 2.0 or the version 2.1. We can select either one. Finally, we confirm and save the status. Now we create at least one logical device for this IED. For this example, let's name it control. Now that you have this logical device, we can create here the logical nodes to receive the information. Click on the created logical device control and then on the add item button. In this example, let's assume we want to create four different switching devices. According to IEC 61850, they can be found under C, supervisory control, and then we go to the logical devices for switch controller. Now you see all elements available for this type of logical node. While some of them are mandatory in the data model, some are not. You can select which ones should be available in your data model to have signals available for them. It is important to have the position and the command. We will not use this BH element, but since it is mandatory we will just leave it in the data model, although we will not create a signal for it. Then we can continue. Now we can type in a prefix and an index. In this example, let's create as prefix auxerve, like if it were for switching devices used for auxiliary services. We can also define an index there, as if we had several group of auxiliary services. But if this is our only group with this prefix, we can leave this field empty. Finally, we define how many switching devices we want to have within this group. We chose four switchgears. So we choose the instance ID 1 to 4. Then we just confirm and we can now see that the logical nodes have been automatically created on the left side. In the same way, you could create general information, input, outputs, or measurements, and so on. It's just a matter of having some knowledge of the standard IEC 61850 logical nodes available. 
And based on this, we can create a very complex data model. The next step is to assign signals to the data model. In our RTU, we have already some signals coming from binary inputs and outputs in the RTU. These signals would correspond to what we want to publish. In this example, we already have signals and commands for four circuit breakers, from Q0 to Q3. Let's assign these signals to the data model. To do that, we go to Home, and then we click on IEC 61850 server, and then on Signals. If we select the IED name, then we will see all the elements in the data model. Or if I select the logical device, then we will just see the elements assigned to this logical device. Since in this example we created only one logical device, in this case it is the same. You can see here on the left the elements selected when we created the data model. We are first interested in the elements indicating the position of these switching devices. And now, to the right, we can see that there is a possibility to assign signals to each element. How do we map them? We want to map the positions here, so we mark all four. At the bottom, you can click on the button to assign signal to IEC 61850 addresses. And we can do the same with the commands. The same must be done with all the signals that we want to publish via IEC 61850 server. The next step is to make this information from our data model available to an external IEC 61850 client, such as CCAMSCC. For that, we can now export the data model. We click Server and then you can export the data model as an IID file by clicking on this button on the top right corner. We choose the folder where we want to export it and click on Export. Now that we exported the IID file with the data model of the IEC 61850 server on the selected protocol element, we can now define if any of the available signals should be published via Goose through the IEC 61850 system configurator available with Dixie 5. First, we will have to create an SCD file to include our IID file. Let's create a new station and let's select the folder where we will be working now. We can call the station SDMF for Goose. We choose the same addition that we defined while creating the data model. And then, to include the IDE file on this SCD file, we need to select through right mouse, click the Add IEC 61850 Devices option, and now we will select here the IID file that we exported. Now since we want to publish information via Goose, we click on Goose. And then we will add one Goose application. And in this Goose application, we can define which information we want to publish. We choose which signals we want to send via Goose. We can now save it. Now we can go to CCAM Device Manager, and there we must go again to IEC 61850 server, and then we import back the SCD file. Now we can see here that all the required configuration to publish Goose messages has been included in the configuration. Now we will see what we have to do if we want to receive information via Goose from another device in the CCAM A8000. First, we expand the data model so we can create a logical device for the connection with the Goose messages that we will be receiving. So let's create another logical device in our data model, which we will use to receive the information from this other device via Goose. Let's say we will receive some trip information from 17S J protection unit in one bay. If we want this logical device to be ready to receive information, then this logical device must be included in the data model when we export it from CCAM Device Manager. For that, we need to map at least one process signal to one element of this logical device in the data model. So, in this case, we will choose this element and we can just create one new signal to be mapped to it automatically. This trick is just to be able to export the logical device. Now that we have at least one signal in this logical device, we can export the data model again. And now we will open the IEC 61850 configurator. We need to update the device, so we go here and click on Update IEC 61850 device. Then we open the IID file. We will also have to import in the configuration, the IED, which will have the signals that we want to receive via Goose. I will add device and I have here one IED file, including the configuration file of the Cipertech device. 
Next, we need to make sure that both are in the same network in the configuration. So here we have my CP8031, but the new device has been put in a different network, so we must put them in the same network. Now we click on Goose. Now we will create a Goose application for the protection to be able to send information. And here we publish from the protection, for example, one projection trip. And maybe also the pickup of the protection. To receive this information in our CP8031, we just drag the element to the logical node in the CP8031 and drop it there. It creates automatically one connection. We can do the same for any other signal we want the CP8031 to subscribe to. Now we will just save our configuration and now we can go to the CCAM device manager and import back the data model. So now we can see that it is creating all the signals. We can check in Goose, in publishing, that the CP8031 has subscribed to the required information. Maybe we are not interested in having all of them. So if this is the case, we can just come here in Signals, and we can just delete them. We will change the name, and that's it. You can see in the configuration of the CP8031 in the signals that it has been receiving direction. The trips are being here with the proper address. And you can check here in the RTU settings that for both we are receiving these data sets. Basically, this is how you can configure Goose communication in the CCAM A8000. I hope you enjoyed this video. We will be publishing more videos soon.